1960, the United Kingdom unveiled the English Electric Lightning, the first and only jet capable of reaching Mach 2 speeds that the UK ever fully produced. The supersonic fighter jet was packed with state-of-the-art technology, including world-first radar tech. The Lightning also features an incredibly unique engine placement that contributes to its iconic look and insane performance. Join us as we learn how English Electric Lightning helped reshape the world of aerial combat. The Prodigy Behind the Plane The story of the English Electric Lightning began with William Teddy Petter, or W.E.W. -E Petter. Petter was born to a religious family in North London in 1908. Teddy would excel in school and eventually make his way to the Gonville and Keyes College, which is the fourth oldest constituent of the world-renowned Cambridge University. The school itself has a history of churning out world-class minds, including 15 Nobel Prize winners. Determined to make his own mark, Teddy studied aircraft engineering and aerodynamics at college. He immediately stood out from his peers and won the John Bernard Seeley Prize in aeronautics at the age of just 21. After graduating, he took on an apprenticeship at his family's company, the Westland Aircraft Works, where he gained experience working in every department there. Petter was hard at work creating innovative designs for Westland, but the UK Air Ministry wanted submissions from engineers with more experience. Petter had only graduated a few years prior to pitching designs for the Westland PV7 multi-role aircraft, but the design's proven capabilities were enough to convince the Air Ministry, even though Teddy lacked experience. Teddy helped design the PV-7's inboard trailing edge split flaps that opened above and below the wings to create drag and act as dive brakes. After Petter got the contract from the Air Ministry, he interviewed pilots to iterate on the design, and he took what he learned to create the Westland P-8 Lysander, which entered service with the Royal Air Force one year before World War II broke out. The Lysander was used to spot artillery, drop messages and later for covert operations behind enemy lines like recovering troops. Petter would help design several other planes including the Whirlwind, the Welkin and the English Electric Canberra after he joined English Electric in 1944. The Canberra was a medium bomber that used first-generation jet engine technology. Petter chose a unique design for the Canberra by placing the engines inside the wings using nacelles instead of the engines being attached to pylons below the wings or on the sides of the fuselage. Post-World War II designs After World War II had ended, the British government wanted to divert military spending away from manned supersonic capable aircraft. This shift in policy led to the cancellation of the highly secret Miles M-52 project. However, Petter knew that the future of flight would be shaped by supersonic designs, and he believed Britain would need to keep innovating to stay on par with the world's superpowers. Because he knew he would run into trouble with the Air Ministry, Petter approached the Ministry of Supply instead. The MOS saw potential in Teddy's planes and issued an order for a single research aircraft that would fly at Mach 1.5 speeds at an elevation of 50,000 feet. The original design of this new plane, dubbed the P-1A, had a 40-degree swept wing to clear the wings of the Mach shockwave cone, but Teddy and his team saw the potential for even better performance. They swept the wings to 60 degrees and moved from a high-mounted tailplane to a low mount. Opponents called the design dangerous, but Teddy thought it would be necessary to reach even faster speeds of Mach 2 while also meeting new requirements for fighter-level maneuverability. The short SB-5 was constructed to test wing angles ranging from 50 to 69 degrees, with both tailplane positions to determine if these radical designs would pan out, and Teddy's configuration outperformed the rest. Capturing lightning in a bottle Three new prototypes were constructed by 1953 and each were powered by Armstrong Siddeley Sapphire turbojets, which lacked afterburners. Originally, the Rolls-Royce Avon was meant to power these models, but the engine was delayed so Teddy and his team at English Electric had to make do. These early research models placed the engines in the fuselage, which would reduce drag on the wings, but it also took up all the space in the body of the aircraft. 
To compensate, the fuel had to be housed in the wings, which meant these prototypes had very short flight times with an operational range of just 150 miles. The P-1B improved all aspects of the aircraft and it finally got the Rolls-Royce Avon engines that it was built around. In 1954, one of the P-1B test models achieved supersonic speed on its very first flight, but the plane's sensors gave a position error that caused it to report a lower speed, but it officially broke the sound barrier on its third flight. Two years later and the P-1B test plane earned the nickname Lightning which would stick around for the rest of its development and it even became the official name of the plane after it was released. As testing continued, the English Electric Lightning proved it could beat the world speed record held by the Fairway Delta II in a single direction, but the Lightning lacked the fuel capacity to remain at max speed for the return trip. Despite the success of the P-1B, the plane struggled with directional stability at Mach 1 speeds, which prevented further testing to reach Mach 2. The British government was suddenly under pressure to get the Lightning up to working order once it learned that the Soviet Union was working on its own jet project with the Tupolev Tu-22 blinder. The Tu-22 was expected to cruise at Mach 1.2 with a top speed of Mach 1.5, which was faster than the Royal Air Force's Gloucester Javelin interceptors. The Gloucester Javelin also had a fatal flaw. Its primary missile was launched from the rear so if the Tu-22 was in the lead, the Javelin couldn't intercept its target. The Air Ministry began working on improved armaments to fire head-on, and they began to research the combat effectiveness of the Bloodhound Mark II surface-to-air missile. The Bloodhound was shown to be effective even against the speeds of the Tu-22, but the Tupolev was projected to enter service before the latest Bloodhound missile which meant Britain wouldn't have adequate defence against the new Soviet medium bomber. To counter the threat, the English Electric Lightning was selected to be the next British interceptor. The tech behind Britain's interceptor. In October 1958, the P-1B was officially named the Lightning, and on November the 25th of the same year, the Lightning reached Mach 2 for the first time, setting a new world record for British aircraft. Changes were made to the plane to improve its speed, rate of climb and acceleration at the trade-off of range. The Lightning was equipped with an advanced Ferranti A123 radar that fed data to the world's first heads-up display. Officially designated the Radar Airborne Interception Mark 23, the A123 was also the world's first monopulse radar. Previous radar systems used conical signals that could be jumbled by fast changes in signal strength, which enemy nations exploited with radar jammers. The Lightning's first ever heads-up display was also a game-changer, since pilots could see critical information without looking away from the canopy. Radar advancements meant that pilots were receiving more verbal communication from radar operators, but the Royal Air Force found that pilots were struggling to make use of this information as they approached targets. The artificial horizon of the Lightning's HUD was powered by a cathode ray tube, or a CRT, like the tubes used in bulky old televisions. The CRT would project an image onto the canopy, and the canopy itself had to be constructed with a special phosphor layer that would emit light when electrons from the CRT made contact with it. Over time, the phosphor layer will eventually degrade and the light from the HUD will dim, but despite its drawbacks, the majority of HUD systems still use this technology today. The Lightning used notched delta wings and it had a unique engine set up. Twin engines of the Lightning were stacked and staggered in an over-under position. This setup gave the plane its unique fuselage shape and Teddy's originally controversial design could operate with the thrust of two engines but with a drag coefficient of roughly one and a half engines, which was crucial for meeting speed requirements. Both engines were fed by a single nose inlet with an inlet cone which created a single powerful shock wave that would reflect into the twin turbojets. The English Electric Lightning was equipped with an interchangeable fuselage weapon system, which gave the plane flexibility to use 48 2-inch unguided air-to-air -air missiles, two Aden 30mm cannons or two de Havilland Firestreak AAMs. The plane also carried two Aden cannons in front of the cockpit by default. Lightning strikes twice. 
Variations of the plane used larger tail fins that were more square, and later models were equipped with the new Rolls-Royce Avon 301R engines. The inlet cone was also reinforced to increase speed, but these changes also further reduced the operational range of the Lightning. The UK also reactivated their Blue Vesta program to develop a new missile named Red Top, which was an air-to-air -air missile with upgraded electronics thanks to engineers switching from valves to transistors. The Red Top also used first-generation infrared-seeking technology that was designed to exploit the heat emitted from planes flying at supersonic speeds. Red Top could also fly farther with better mobility and it had a faster speed compared to the Fire Streak. Variants of the English Electric Lightning had access to these new missiles. Later versions also increased the fuel capacity by adding larger tanks that couldn't be jettisoned. In 1960, the first Lightning F-1 model was sent to the 74 Squadron Frontline Command as the second Western European plane with supersonic capabilities in active service. Once there, the Lightning was meant to be scrambled to defend various airfields around the UK. In spite of the Lightning's capabilities, its complex design and electronic systems made the aircraft difficult to service, but over time technicians got used to the plane and more were added to various squadrons, bringing the total number of planes to 337, including the original prototypes. As the years went by, various versions were released, including the F-3, which was later converted to the F-6, that removed the default cannons and added longer flight capabilities. The Lightning F-53, or the Export Lightning, was a multi-role variant sent to Germany, and other variants were sent to Kuwait and Saudi Arabia. The Lightning has also been used in several strange situations. And in 2010, physics professor Brian Cox commissioned a flight in a South African Lightning for the BBC TV programme Wonders of the Solar System. The crew relied on the refined Lightning's 60,000-foot service ceiling to take footage of the curvature of the Earth and showcase different levels of the atmosphere. The same plane crashed a month later during an air show. So that's the story of one of the UK's fastest and most advanced interceptor jets. Lightning paved the way for the heads-up displays in use in virtually all major aircraft around the world and its radar system became the system other countries needed to emulate for years to come. The Lightning faced an uphill battle thanks to its strained design, but it overcame its limitations to become one of the most renowned planes of all time. And that's it for today's video. How does the Lightning stack up against your favourite plane? Let us know in the comments section. While you're there, you don't have to use a radar to locate and click that like and subscribe button, but it sure helps the channel if you do. Thanks for watching and hit that bell to catch the next aviation video coming your way soon.